So the last couple weeks, we've been exploring and getting deeper into the idea of relationships that bless. It's a fundamental part of a way to think about a church as relationships. It's not the building or the programs or, or, or even the pastor or the leaders, because all those things change over time. It's about the relationships and the connections with one another. It's one of the reasons it's one of the fundamental ways we think of our strategy. We gather together into church and we have relationships that bless in addition to observing faith practices and working together for God. So we've been diving into this idea and looking at different aspects of our relationships and connections with one another. Uh, We looked at valuing them and then last week we looked at growing them. And this morning I want to look at communicating in our relationships that bless, a fundamental part of any relationship, whether it's a marriage, whether it's family, whether it's friendships, um, in faith relationships, we got to communicate and connect with one another. But then, of course, we know that communication can be difficult. It can be challenging. I heard the story of a, a couple where they got into an argument and then proceeded into the dreaded silent treatment of each other. We know we shouldn't do it, uh, but that's where they were, you know. Um, Had gone on two, I think maybe three days of giving each other the silent treatment. Um, And then the husband realized that he needed a favor from his wife. Uh, The next morning he had to get up early and and had to catch a flight, and she was an early riser. She usually helped him with this. Um, And he needed her help But he didn't want to be the first one. You know, that pride kicks in. I'm not going to be the one to break the silence. So he wrote it on a slip of paper. Wake me at 5 a.m. I have an early flight. And he handed it to her. Well, the next morning, he woke up, looked at the clock, and it was 9 a.m. She was up and out of bed already, and of course he was angry. She didn't wake him up. You know, he was about to get up and go and find her and, um, you know, let her have it. And then he saw on the nightstand a little note. It's 5 a.m., wake up. we got to communicate. we got to talk to each other. And I want to look at a scripture passage that's just excellent at this. The Bible just nails it in one verse. I'm going to read a little bit around that one verse just so we get a sense of the tone of this scripture, but this one verse could really change our communication if we take it to heart. It's found in the book of James. Uh, James was an early follower of Jesus, very likely Jesus' own brother James, and this is found in the first chapter. So James starts out, every generous act of giving with every perfect gift is from above. All those gifts we have are from above, coming down from the Father of lights. James likes to use some flowery language. From whom there is no variation or picking up on the idea of the shadow of lights or shadow due to change. God is perfect. He goes on, in fulfillment of his own purpose, he gave us birth by the word of truth that we exist by God's word so that we would become a kind of first fruits of his creation. He's referring to how wonderful we are, the, the, the beauty of humanity um, in the midst of creation. The idea of first fruits was that the, the first fruits of, of, of what we receive are to be an offering, and he kind of refers to humanity as this. I should note that this morning being Earth Day, the fact that we're the first fruits doesn't mean that we don't also have a responsibility to care for the rest of creation, James starts out. And then in this one verse, he nails communication. He says, you must understand this, my beloved. Let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger. For your anger does not produce God's righteousness. And then he continues on a little bit, picking up that theme, and we'll come back to to verse 19. He continues on, Therefore rid yourselves of any sordidness and rank growth of wickedness, and welcome with meekness the implanted word that has the power to save your souls. He's talking about how we can 
slip and and have the sordidness and wickedness in our life, but instead should have the Word of God deep in who we are. And then he picks up on that idea, which is worthy of a whole message all by itself. He says, but be doers of the Word, not merely hearers who deceive themselves, that we should live the Word of God. He continues, for if any are hearers of the Word and not doers, they are like those who look at themselves in a mirror, For they look at themselves and on going away immediately forget what they were like. But those who look into the perfect law, the law of liberty and persevere, being not hearers who forget but doers who act, they will be blessed in their doing. A wonderful description of how we should live out the word of God. He says, if any think they are religious and do not, and then he comes back to this idea of communication, and do not bridle their tongues. What a wonderful image there. The bridle is that that device used on a horse to guide and lead the horse that we should bridle our tongues, he says, but deceive their hearts, their religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to care for orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself unstained by the world. So as I said, I want to come back to that one verse from from James 1.19. You must understand this, my beloved. Let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger. I want to note, by the way, before we get more deeply into that verse, I I, I checked uh, some resources about good communication. Places like Psychology Today and other advice websites on the internet, just kind of looking up good communication, and I was just touched that most of what I read there came back to this very simple verse from James. Most of it derives from this scriptural verse. So let's dive into it a little bit um, and just kind of pull apart this simple little description of of James 1.19. So he starts out, be quick to listen. That the fundamental beginning, the start of good communication is to listen to pay attention, to understand the other person before you even try and communicate from yourself, to be quick to listen. I looked it up this week. I always thought it was just one of those clever things that somebody came up with, uh, but it goes all the way back to the philosopher Epictetus, um, who noted that we have two ears and one mouth, so we ought to listen twice, twice as much as we speak. I just thought that was like a wives' tale or something, but the, the, all the way from the philosopher uh, Epiki, Epictetus, Epic, Epictetus, that's better, Epictetus, do more listening than speaking um, to first understand the other person um, and listen to them is good communication. Uh, if you were here back in the um, series that we did, we started off the year, uh, Faithful Pathways to Recovery, um, then you might remember that I actually did a whole message on listening and how important that is in our relationships and connections with each other. I, I listed in that message 10 different pieces of advice for listening. I certainly don't want to repeat all of that, but as I looked over that list again, there were three that really stood out to me, that, that if we're going to take the heart of listening, we want to be fully present. Um, we want to be with and connect with the other person. Um, we want to be open and learning in that posture of gaining from the other person to understand them. Um, And then we certainly want to look for God's Spirit. Uh, We want to pay attention to what God might communicate to us in a relationship with somebody else. That listening is so important. That's where James starts. Be quick to listen. Be quick to listen. And then he continues on. Then be slow to speak. Slow to speak. Take your time. Well formulate your your thoughts. Um, Articulate well what you want to communicate. Uh, Respect the other person. Um, 
take your time. It's, it's okay even in a, in a conversation to say, well, let me think about that. Um, I find myself sometimes in communication saying, well, I, I don't know if I, if I can describe this as well as I want. Let me, let me do my best. Just trying to search for, to thoughtfully be slow to speak, to communicate what we need to communicate. Maybe this example will be helpful. Um, I've sometimes said this to folks when talking about relationships. My wife, Carolyn, and I were first dating uh, and then were newly married. Um, I would say stupid things. Uh, and what I found uh, through the, the course of our relationship uh, is I would say something dumb and early on, two days later, I would realize it and I would apologize for it and, you know, kind of make better. And then we were married a little longer and uh, then it would be a day later uh, that I would realize I shouldn't have said that and I would apologize. Um, and as our marriages continued, um, then it would be an hour later that I would apologize. Um, and what I, I hope and I think I've come to is it's halfway out of my mouth or it's formulated in my brain and I go, no, 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 don't say that out loud. The time, the time gap of the dumb thing um, and when it got uttered or now it doesn't even get uttered has dropped. Um, and I think that's exactly what James is talking about. Be slow to speak. If you're not sure, maybe don't say it at all. Um, just take your time um, and be slow to speak, James says. And then third, uh, be slow to anger slow to anger. Um, and that happens sometimes uh, in communication. We, we lose our temper. We've probably all heard some of the simple advice to hold on to your temper. Easier for some of us than others. Sometimes our, our temperament is difficult, but, but they often simple advice like, take a deep breath, just calm down. Um, sometimes they say when you're trying to control your temper, count to ten. You know, again, just take that little bit of time that you need. Um, for other folks, even sometimes going for a walk, taking that little bit of break, be slow to anger. Um, just let that calm down, because what we say in anger, as James had described earlier, can lead us in some very negative places. Um, in fact, um, as we now understand anger on a deeper level, uh, we have the ability to evaluate and, and look at our brains. They can put you in a machine that can tell what your brain is doing and, and how it's responding uh, as you do different things. And one of the things we now understand about anger is anger takes place like in the lower brain. The, the animal part of our brain, or what they even refer to as our reptilian brain, it's the fight or flight. Um, and when that part of the brain fires, when we get angry, the top part, the thinking part, shuts down. Um, and it's just the, you know, you jump into it, and, and that's why you say stupid things, because your, your, your better brain, your, your, your higher thinking brain has shut down, and it's the lower part. Um, by the way, the same thing is true when we're fearful or anxious, too. That lower brain fires, and the upper brain doesn't. Now, I always think that's fascinating, uh, that uh, we understand this a little more deeply. I think sometimes when I refer to psychology, people are thinking, well, well, you know, we ought to just be talking about the Bible. But it's exactly the opposite. We're now just understanding how our brains work. That is exactly what God describes in the Bible. Um, that if we're slow to anger, if we check that, um, that lets us speak and communicate in the ways that we're meant to. Um, to be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger. 
So I did want to mention that I was meeting with the Mutual Ministry Committee the other day, and um, we decided it would be good to have uh, time for us as a congregation to have conversation. Um, we'll get it well advertised, but the first Sunday in June, because in our church community, it's good that we talk and speak and connect and, and understand each other well, to communicate just as James describes. But let me finish uh, by noting the stickers that I hope you had an opportunity uh, to grab one of in the back. It struck me that James 1.19 is so helpful um, that I thought I'd give you a, a, a way to hold on to this a little bit. You know, take that sticker and put it wherever it's good and useful for you. You know, put it on your, your dresser or stick it on your Bible or, you know, on your cell phone or in your car or in your workplace, wherever you need that for that just simple little reminder to be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger.